Hey, what's going on everybody? Um, this video is to just kind of explain uh, this sump and this tank. I was getting a bunch of questions on this after I posted uh, a few pictures of it in, uh, in some Reddit forums. Um, and there's some stuff about this sump and this design that um, I thought would be super helpful if um, for other people. Um, and also if I knew about it you know, eight years ago when I first started making sumps. Um, I've had, you know, some experience to just know what just drives me crazy and what's really annoying about uh, a particular, you know, a particular design after having it for a few years. Sometimes you make something and it works great at first. And then just after time using it, it being an operation, you get a whole bunch of experience with, uh, knowing what's annoying and uh and so this sump is basically um after running some systems for you know multiple years and basically just in, eliminates all annoyances that um that i've had with previous setups so far it's been running for about a month just getting cycled and uh I am super happy with it so far. So, so far I can't see any of those same problems happening and uh, I just thought it would be, be helpful to share. Um, real quick, so I think it, it'll make sense to just, I'm gonna try and make this as short as possible with still answering all the questions. And I think the way I'm gonna approach it is just talk about it from the drain down into the tank through each chamber and then back up and the thought behind it. So first thing to talk about, like the, the drain going down into the tank. Um, and I thought this would be worth adding in here for anybody that's considering buying an eShops Eclipse overflow box. Um, this is how the water gets down into the sump. <clears throat> um, you know, if you are running a sump, you have to do it somehow. You either have to drill the glass or do a hang on the back filter or a hang on the back overflow box, which I'm fine with. I, I have one upstairs that's been running for years um, without problems. But um, this tank I wanted to eliminate is any anything going over the rim as I could, I guess. Um, so um, if you're familiar with what an eShots Eclipse looks like, you'll notice that this already looks different. Um, the reason is they normally have about another half inch, uh, no, not about, they have another half inch of acrylic on here and the teeth don't actually show at the top. It ends in a, you know, flat, whatever. Um, I had my aquarium shop that has a table saw with nice, you know, 80 tooth carbide tip, you know, uh, saw blades on there, uh, cut off a half an inch of this and then torch it to polish it a little bit. Um, and the reason is, is if you have a tank that has a rim um, and you don't want to see your water line, which no one wants to see, you have to do that. You have to cut off about a half inch, otherwise your water line ends up being about there, which is not ideal and it's ugly and it just, it's not what you're going for. So I'm not sure what the thought process eShops had with making the teeth so tall and deep. Maybe they, maybe they thought people were gonna be putting a ton more flow in them. I don't really know, uh, but for this tank, um, it's a moderate amount of flow. It's a black water tank. There's not a ton of blown around. Maybe people that are using it for marine applications are really putting a ton of water through. I don't know. Um, but just keep that in mind. If you're going to use one of these, keep in mind where you want your water at. So it goes down uh, through this plumbing into the back of the sump. And this is the first thing that I changed over previous sump designs that just drove me crazy. Um, I don't like it when the plumbing is coming into the top of the sump. I realize that that makes sense for filter socks, I guess. Um, I, you could still actually even do this if you were running filter socks. Um, I just don't like when you're changing out either filter socks or in my case, a filter pad, reaching around PVC or, you know, or vinyl tubing or whatever you're using. It's just inconvenient and it's, it's annoying. Um, so 
I like to have it coming in. I I wanted I designed this to have it come in the back and out of I siliconed in. Um, so if you do this, you have to put the bulkheads in first, and then build almost like the opposite of an overflow box around those bulkheads. Because um, if you build the box first, then you can't get your bulkheads in. So I put the bulkheads in um, and made almost like an overflow box that this fills up and then spills onto my pad the, the, with the first chamber for the mechanical filtration. So really, really like how this has turned out. It's working great and um, you know, it's doing what I thought it would. Nothing, there's a tiny bit of sand that has, that's stuck there right now. Um, I, that was my fault. I just dumped some sand in and some got into the overflow box. Um, but actual detritus, you know, whatever from the tank, it does not settle there. It goes right into the pad. <clears throat> so, in an effort to keep this short, I'll just go through and hopefully not forget any of the questions. So, first thing over here is obviously the overflow box, the, the reverse of an overflow box. I don't know how else to say that. Um, I just made that out of glass and I also sil siliconed in a very small piece of acrylic. I couldn't cut glass thin enough. It's really hard to cut a thin, thin piece of glass without it uh, going crazy so and flaring and whatever. So I just used acrylic for this piece here just to help direct the flow onto the pad. Pad, lighting diffuser, very common in the hobby. You can get that anywhere cut it to whatever size you want and actually that brings me to my first point when you're making a sump and if you're using this measure this before you silicone in your baffles um, if this was for example another quarter of an inch that way this wouldn't really work well you'd have to cut like halfway through all these lighting if you you know lighting diffuser slots and you'd have teeth hanging out uh, at, at the end um, instead of a smooth edge like that. The reason why that can be really annoying over time is um, your filter media, it likes to catch on those teeth. So you want it to be smooth on the edges. Um, the way I did it was I just cut it um, with um, some wire snippers or tin snippers, I don't know, just anything. But then after you're done, sand down the the little bumps on the edge on the edges so you don't have anything see this this filter pad nothing's catching it um if you don't do that you know stuff catches on it and it's just something that annoys you after changing pads for years next thing that's helpful to mention is i used some scrap glass and siliconed it to the glass at the level that i wanted this this makes it so this um, lighting diffuser is removable and very stable. There's a piece on each side that holds this in place. And that means that um, you don't have to worry about this wobbling or shifting or falling when you're changing your pad that, or, or your filter socks or whatever, or your filter changing your pad <laughs> sounds kind of funny. Uh, changing your, your filter media, it's um, that's super annoying if your platform wobbles out of place. Uh, next here is uh, just lava rock. Um, this uh, baffle comes down to about um, an inch, and then I have um, another piece of acrylic. You can't really see it. It's just acrylic teeth. I just put cuts in acrylic and silicone this acrylic to separate these two sides so no media can get in here or vice versa. Uh, but this is just lava rock, it's in bags. This makes it easier to clean. I anticipate having to rinse that out maybe once a year, whatever, and it's just convenient to have that in bags um, rather than just dumping it all in there. So that's that. This here, um, if you're not familiar, it's a fluidized, uh, fluidized bed section or fluidized filter media. Uh, this is K1 Micro, five liters of it. I could probably use an, I don't know, that's enough, whatever. Um, this is the next part that I thought might be helpful for anybody using a fluidized uh, system or thinking about it. 
Uh, these, they don't kick out a tremendous amount of mold, but they do kick out some dust from the bacteria constantly dying. In my other tanks that I've used, I, I have one upstairs that's been running for about five years, and um, I didn't make any section like this. So the mulm just kind of goes all over the sump. And about once a year you have to, you know, vacuum it or or sometimes I'll mix it all up and, and get that just the sump real murky and then do a water change on the sump after doing that. And it's just annoying. You don't want to have to do that. So um, what I decided to do was um, make this section here. And what's happening here is this first one is all the way down to the bottom. So the water has to go this way. Um, this part here is more acrylic teeth that I just cut small enough so the micro K1 micro can't get through. But what this does is it makes it so um, any the water is basically forced through here and any of this mulm or dust gets caught in this sponge. So far it's been about a month, which isn't a ton of time to see how this is going to work long term, but so far I haven't noticed any change in the rate of flow. So I'm hoping I'll only have to squeeze this out once every three months or something. I don't know. Maybe that's a little over optimistic. Not really sure. We'll see. Um, this is sitting on lighting diffuser. Again, silicone glass made for the platform. And again, I measured the baffles so I don't have teeth sticking out. It's one nice piece of lighting diffuser that makes this pet platform. And it sounds, may sound insignificant, but over the long term, when you're doing maintenance on your tank, once a month, once every three months, whatever, over years, those little details do get annoying. Um, so that's what's happening. This is just to, um, and this also will filter out micro, micro bubbles too. Uh, bigger bubbles will go up here and the other ones will uh, get caught in there. I don't see any really in the water column, so that seems to be working fine. Micro bubbles aren't really a big concern with fresh water anyway, but um, it can happen, uh, especially with this all this going on. This last section is an anoxic filter section. There's information about these on the internet too. This is um, uh, using clay and laterite. Um, this is the last thing I wanted to mention too. Um, I made this basket out of lighting diffuser and I thought it would be helpful to know that um, lighting diffuser, it must be chemically very close to PVC because it will bond as one piece of plastic would bond, you know, as PVC would bond with PVC cement and primer. Um, it doesn't just glue it and you can rip it apart it actually makes it one piece you can't get it apart you break the plastic before you get it apart so that's nice to know if you're ever building something out of these um that's a that basket goes the whole length it's full of uh, kitty litter clay baked kitty litter um and laterite um and again that's an anoxic section we're testing on i've never run that before the reason I wanted to run that is this is a black water tank. There's going to be zero, no plants in it. And there's going to be a lot of stuff decaying in there, making nitrate. And supposedly these really help with nitrates and, and I think phosphates too is what they said. I'm not really sure, but we'll see. I have no plants to do that. So if this helps the water quality, we'll see. And, uh, that's it. Again, uh, these lids, I ended up putting a piece of glass on this lid here. Um, I'm never going to have to go in there. I drilled these holes for ease of access. I didn't want to put little, I bought um, little press on handles and it looked terrible. I didn't like the way it looked. So I just drilled holes in them and I like that look better. Um, but I ended up covering this one because from all the bubbles popping from this, um, after a week I had calcium buildup just around this one so no issues here 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 just with this one so i covered that i never have to go in there anyway so it's not a big deal um the plumbing in here is dry fitted you always want to do that um just in case you need to change this pump out or clean it maintenance whatever uh this is probably worth men mentioning that's um a little g-cod um just trying to save some money 
um, DC pump. I think it's like the DCP, whatever the newest G-COD one is they're always making a new one, but that is one of the smallest ones. It's rated for 750 gallons or something like that, and it's powerful, super, super quiet, and so far, so good. I've got a G-COD, an older one that's been running on my tank upstairs for about four years after my old um, pump died. So I know people say they, they die prematurely. The one upstairs has been doing great um, for years, and that one's, I think it's like an 1,800-gallon-per-hour one for my 150. Anyways, so that's about it. I hope that answer covers everything on it. I will probably, this isn't stock just yet. Um, I thought it would be maybe just posting another video in six months or a year, just saying how everything here turned out. But so far, um, I really like this. It's a, it is a little bit different from most sumps that I've seen. I've never really seen one plumb through the bank, back like that, all covered. I really, really like that idea. And uh, I haven't seen too many with this idea with the um, fluidized filter too to catch the mulm. So we'll see long term how it works out. I'll, maybe I'll throw something up in a year and we'll have some fish in here or something and uh, and just sort of an update on this. But so far, so good. So hope that helps.